It's so interesting that in life, from the very time we emerge and we are birthed, we're taught that we're to make a decision. Our parents are giving us wisdom and guidance. Our family is giving us wisdom and guidance. And everything in our lives comes down to the fact that we're being taught in that moment to make a decision. And the reason we're being taught that is we understand and we accept that with the decision, we have power. That all of our power emanates from that decision we make. And it doesn't matter what the decision is, there will be a consequence. And the consequence is something we create. So when we make a decision, there is absolutely no turning back. A decision means there is no other option available to us. Otherwise, it's just a wish. So if we make a decision for a certain aspect in our lives, what then must be our expectation? Our expectation must be what we've made the decision toward. Otherwise, it's not a decision. So we come to this idea of positive thinking. You've heard about the movement. Norman Vincent Peale brought this movement of positive thinking. And a lot of people say, well, that's just wonderful and it doesn't work. Well, there are ways that you've got to look at positive thinking. It's positive thinking, wishing it, saying, oh, everything's beautiful in my life, and oh, by the way, this is happening to me, and I can't do this, I can't do this. You see, you're saying it one time, then with yourself, you're digging it up. There's a difference between positive thinking and positive expectation. Positive expectation means there's no other alternative, therefore, all my energy is going to focus on that which I've decided. That's a whole different way of being because when we have a positive expectation, we act as if in every moment. We act as if when we are alone with ourselves, with our own thoughts. We do not allow that idea of doubt to come in and continue to surface with us because it doesn't fit the expectation we've got. And as soon as we hear that doubt, we immediately shift our mind and shift how we're looking at things so we come back to the expectation that it's going to happen for us. Because we come back to the very essence, the sum total of everything that we think, the conscious and the unconscious, are creating our lives right here and right now. And so if we are putting a positive expectation, a direct expectation towards something, we're feeding our subconscious mind all of that information. And when we're feeding all of that information into that mind, as soon as that mind shifts to 51%, we start to experience it. But if we're not coming through with a positive expectation, realize that the subconscious mind is 97, 98% of what we thought. So we've got a lot of consciousness to fill that to shift its flavor. Positive expectation absolutely means knowing you are one with God. Because if you are not having a positive expectation, there's no way that you know your oneness. Because one of the things we can talk about this power and presence that we call God, it's not a being. We've defined that. It's a, it's a, it's, it's undescribable. We, we use terms like spirit. We use terms like divine mind. We use terms like consciousness. We use all of these various things. We use the term energy. And energy is what God is. God is all energy. But it's more than energy. It's the consciousness with the energy. And the consciousness, the intellect, the mind of God takes this energy and moves it, swirls it, slows it down, speeds it up, and creates everything out of it. So the energy is God that it uses of itself to create itself in and through and as all things. But it's doing that with consciousness. So consciousness is that which is motivating, which is forming, which is shaping the energy that is God to create. And we understand as we study all of the great spiritual paths, it's through our focus that when we plant that seed, there's an aspect of God that is creating that in every moment. And we understand that that creative power is always there. It's like we know how to use it. We can't define energy but we know it's there and we can use it. 
It's the same thing with the power of our thought, with the power of our mind. It's always there. It's been proven over and over and over again. You have demonstrated in your lives every moment of every day. The issue is, has it been with positive expectancy or have you become comfortably numb? I love coming back to that song. In fact, I played that on YouTube today. Had Pink Floyd doing Comfortably Numb. And it just really reminded me how we as a society have lost our ability to have a positive expectation. We will accept anything that a psychologist, that a financial planner, that a doctor, that a minister, that our mother, that our father, that our children say, and we will allow that to form our consciousness, and from that we create. Instead of saying, no, I have decided my life will be this, and I put all of my expectation into that, and I do not deviate from from that, no matter who is there. Because the second you deviate from your expectation toward what you want, you have subordinated yourself to that other person, to that other idea. You are no longer being authentic, which means not being authentic. You're not being an individual, and not being an individual, you're not unique. And when you're not unique, you're not God. Whoa, that was a mouthful. Because you think about this. God individualized itself uniquely as everything on this planet, everything in this cosmos, and there are no two things alike. God does not hit the copy machine and duplicate exact things. It creates unique things. It's about creating more of life. This is the aspect of life. Life is always for more life. It is always blossoming into more life. So if life is for that and you are the individualization of life, then your whole purpose in this world is to blossom into a new life, to expand and to grow in your unique fashion. Not like anyone else. You're not here to live up to your parents' expectations. You're not here to live up to your spouse's or your partner's expectations. You're not here to live up to your children's expectations. You're not here to live up to God's expectations. I just violated cardinal rule number one in the Catholic Church. God expects this of you. No, God doesn't. Because God doesn't judge. God accepts all things because all things are the expression of itself. God has nothing to compare against. God does not, in its allness, does not know evil. It can't know evil because to know evil would mean there was something outside of it. There can't be anything outside of God because God is infinite. If it's omnipresent, omnipotent, there's nothing nothing that can be outside of God. You see, that's a man-made delusion. That's a delusion that's come from the very beginning of time in order for man to explain things because at the beginning, man did not understand that there was an allness that it was going to, but there was something inside that was always seeking to cause more to come out. And that something more was a desire to create, to express, and to experience. And as we're expressing and we're experiencing, our hearts are lifted, we're filled with joy. But when we're pressing the button to copy, I want to be just like Kelly Brown. When I try to be like Kelly Brown, I will never be happy because I will have denied the essence of Lee. If I tried to be like my mother wanted me to be, I couldn't be Lee and I would not be happy. You see, we are here to be unique. And that's why positive expectancy coming from within us toward that which we've decided upon is the greatest gift we can give ourselves. It's a way of living. It's a way of knowing. I've had a lot of people come to me recently asking me, so you're going to India in um, June, and you're going to be in silent meditation for 16 days. You're going to be in a country where you know no one, you've never been, you know nothing. Aren't you scared? And I said, no. I've set an expectation. When I'm back here that first Sunday in July, I will levitate for you. (laughs) I've set an expectation. Brother Chi Singh, who spoke here a couple weeks ago, says, Lee, Will you teach me to levitate? 
I said, brother, it will be my gift to teach you. For you see, I don't know if I will levitate physically, but I know spiritually I will levitate. I have set an expectation that the silence that I will be in will be a silence that allows me to free myself of all the limiting thoughts that are still holding me in a position It's going to free myself from attachment to any human being and what they're doing. And in the letting go of my past, in the letting go of attachment to others, I am a free expression of God where I can now soar. I don't know if you understand this, but even when you're married to a most beautiful woman as I am, I may have attachments to how that looks. And in those attachments within my own mind, they could be holding me back. It has nothing to do with what my partner's doing. Are you hearing that? It's all a mental perception. So as I go there, I'm going forward with the intention of releasing anything in my mind. And I'm coming back so that I can be so free that when I look at someone, I can see God as them. I can speak that as them. I can speak truth, and I will never worry about what's being thought of. See, that's true love. True love is being able to look at someone, listen to the story, and say, that is not your truth. This is your truth. Come out of that nonsense. When you do that, that is pure love. And if you build a community like this community that speaks that, on a daily basis, and anytime someone comes to you and they've got this story, and you say, no, I don't want your story. Tell me what you want so I can help you expect that. You see, I want to expect for you everything that you want in your life. I want to see you in Hollywood singing and then coming back to Agape and bringing thousands of people to hear you sing. I expect I expect Kelly Brown to write songs that lift souls, that inspire her, that juice her in a way that she's never felt before because she has a talent. I know Steve Curry's evolvement as a lead guitarist and music director and singer because I'm witnessing how he's shifted. Every week he comes in and he does this song at the end, To Be Grateful, and you feel the energy That energy was he opened himself up to the divine within him and allowed it to come forth. And what I know about these people, especially with Steve, he's attracting those people who have that vibration, that energy, that magic that lifts the soul. I know that Gene teaching classes is an as it is not even an extension of my teaching. She's an individual teaching of God that is pure in every way. And so what we are attracting at Agape are individuals who have bought into this idea of unconditional love as a way of life and accept nothing other than unconditional love, but yet are forgiving and willing to let go of anyone as they go through the process of becoming unconditional love. So you can be that, have the human experience, and come and not be judged. Isn't that utopia? Takes me back to the 60s when I was just going into college. Then you had to smoke a dope to get to utopia. A dope. You had to smoke a joint. Excuse me, a dope. Well, I was a dope when I smoked, so anyway, that goes without saying. But the idea is it is possible because it's in the mind, and when the mind expects it, and it lives that, and breathes that, and speaks that, and thinks that, and acts that. Did you notice how I put all of those things together? Because in positive expectation, all of those things are in alignment. All of your actions, let's say it's in health, all of your actions expect health. They don't expect anything but health. All of your words speak to health. All of your actions are toward health. Everyone you associate with is bringing health into your vibration. That's what you're talking about. You're talking about health. You are not talking about illness. To talk about illness brings what? Illness. So we're talking about health because in God, there is only health. So the idea is when we can recognize that it is the infinite expressing in us, 
in that moment, we can recognize that we must be healthy. Because if we can't recognize that God is speaking in us, we can't be healthy. Because if we recognize God in us as, is in us, as us, health is our natural birthright. Because God does not know illness. The thing we have in society, we become comfortably numb to this idea. And we have allowed the doctors and we have allowed the law of averages to take over all of our thoughts. And we allow that to be our story. And you see, we set the expectation for what they've determined instead of what we've determined. Remember this, that when people are quoting you what's going to happen, 50% of the people that get married will be divorced. You've heard that before? It's a statistic, right? Does that, hap does that happen to everybody? No, there are people all over the spectrum, right? There are people who have different expectations. Some people expect to be married 20 times. They're skewing the average. And I think we have a couple of them here. I just saw some laughter. Some people have skewed that you don't get married at all. That distorts the average. Is there a number that is right? No. Because being married has nothing to do with expressing unconditional love. It's a society um, ritual that is based on certain agreements. But is it necessary to express unconditional love? It is not. So we can take away the judgment of not fitting into what society has said we should fit into. And here's the key is, wherever you are in this moment, you can set your expectation that your relationships from this moment forward will be based in pure, unconditional love. And from this very moment forward, you can set an eternity of living in unconditional love. It does not matter what your past was. Your past is irrelevant. It doesn't exist. The only way your past exists is if you go back and you take it from the past and you bring it forward in your mind, and you set an expectation, that happened to me before, it's going to happen to me again. You see, it's our expectation there that locks us in. But if we stop looking at the past and we go, oh, this is what I've decided on, this is what I want, and I put all of my expectation there, I will demonstrate that in my life. You will demonstrate that in your life, and I guarantee it. This scientific principle has been used by millions and millions of people, and it is proven over and over again. What happens to us is we use it for something specific, we demonstrate what we want in our lives, then we become comfortably numb and go back into the law of averages, not thinking our own thoughts, and we recreate the past instead of staying on the thing. You see, being positively expectant and being a deliberate creator is work. It is work that you do on every moment by moment by moment of every day of every day of every day with every person, with every person, with every event, with every event. You are constantly in expectation of what you want and you can't rest. The idea is if you expect something and it is what you want, you don't want to rest because you are creating something that's going to bring you such joy that you can't help but get into that. I expect to stop watching TV when I come back from um, India. So in order to do that, you have to align yourself into that, right? So I just did this. Yesterday, it was the most subtle of moods. In my living room area, I had a big cage where my yellow nape Amazon parrot stays. That's where Toby is, because that's where we spend most of our time. What I've done is yesterday I got my son Steve and we moved the cage into the kitchen. That simple movement caused me yesterday, instead of taking my food when I was snacking into the living room and watching TV, I stood at the table so the bird would have company. 
Last night, while Stephen was watching TV, instead of going and watching TV, I stood in the living room and I watched YouTube videos to get ideas of where I wanted to, what I wanted to talk about, things that were expansive in mind, and the bird was right there. You see, it was a simple act that the bird is a partner with me in my life. He's been with us for 31 years. So I don't want the bird to be alone, so I just made a simple shift of something, and it's taken me in the direction. I've not given up TV yet because I didn't set my expectation till I get back from India. You see that? But while I've set that expectation, I am moving toward it. Now, does that mean I will stop watching all television? No, because there are certain programs I love. I love some of Oprah's stuff. I love um, the class she does at like 10 in the morning that we tape all the time because I like hearing Eckhart Tolle. I like hearing Deepak Chopra. I like hearing these great spiritual avatars. There There are valuable things, but I don't want it to be an unconscious habit. See, I have an expectation of spiritually growing, evolving, and becoming more so I can be an example for others to do the same. So with that expectation, I have to now align my thoughts, my words, and my actions toward it, as do you. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to think about one thing in your life. What is that one thing you would like to see different, that you would like to see moved in a specific way? And I would like you to spend this next week writing down all the things that you could think of differently, all the things that you could speak of differently, and what actions could you begin to take now that will allow you to start living in a state of deep, deep, deep expectancy that that will happen. You see, until you've embraced this, until you take the action, until you shift the thoughts, nothing new can happen. Because guess what? All the power that you are ever seeking, that you've always looked for, is right within you now. There's nothing outside of you to help you. The God presence is who you are. And when you tune in, tap in, and turn on to that, you will experience such great joy, such great happiness, such great expansion, that you will become the world that you desire to be. I want to thank you for joining us today. I am so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask you to go to our website. Once there, click on the Contribute button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to the world. I would also ask you to please Share this message with anyone you feel might benefit. Again, I want to thank you for joining me and the Agape community as together we bring joy to life.